Welcome to Arnie's Class Podcast. I'm Arnie Aniel. I'm an HR development consultant, an international public speaker, a workshop facilitator, a coach, and an educator. Life is a great opportunity, and we all learn life lessons every day. This podcast is all about those lessons. Lessons like gratitude, confidence, happiness, mindset, and a lot more. Learning without action is information. Learning with action is transformation. Join me. Learn and transform yourself into a better you. Like mates, I'm going to talk about arts with my special guest in this episode. Arts is human expressions and creativity. And normally, it's influenced by culture. And I would say that art is everywhere. It's in your home. It's everywhere you go, you see art. Art is evident. And just like music, art has an effect on our mood and emotions. Art can relax us or energize us in any form. Art can, that's a piece, a piece of work that can be like, maybe painting, a sculpture, a photograph. It can even make our life joyful. And sometimes, whether you realize it or not, arts influence our daily lives. But personally, I've heard that money is not easy if you are a person working in the arts, like artists. I know some people are actually into arts. They paint. But they said, life is not that easy. Money doesn't come easily. In this episode, I'm going to talk with a friend from Denmark who is a professional artist. An artist by heart. I think art is everywhere in his life, in his body. I think he is born as an artist. Let's learn more from him. Life mates, listen and learn. Life mates, welcome to another episode of Anis Class. In this episode, we're going to talk about arts. My special guest is from Denmark. He is a professional artist, a professional painter with a degree in teaching English, Danish, and arts. Please welcome Kent Daniel Kobachs. Daniel, welcome to Anis Class. Thank you very much. Daniel is my artist name. Right. Just remember that, you know, I use it. I've been using it since I since I got married in Israel. And in Israel you need you need a Jewish name. And Daniel so, is a and, Jewish name. And Daniel is a Jewish name, yes. Kent is not. Anyway. Oh, just a little part of my history, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Daniel, how long have you been an artist? I would say since I was born. Wow. <laughs> so you feel <laughs> that it's, it's, it's innate for you? Say that again? It's like an innate, innate no, no, part no, no. of you that you are an artist since you were born. Yeah. I'm um, I'm born in an artistic environment. My father he was Hungarian, that's why my surname is Kovac. It's not it's not a Danish surname. Um, it's a Hungarian name. My father he was uh, educated as a professional musician. So art has always been a part of my life. That's why it, I say basically ever since I was born. So it runs in your blood. You can say that, yes. It's part of my inheritance. But when did you start really painting? Okay, I was waiting for that. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, that was the question I was waiting for. So, um, just to say it quickly, you know, I began drawing um, maybe when I was... Uh, seven, ten years, but I was drawing with pencils. Um, 
my first uh, oil paint was, uh, I don't remember the exact year, but I was about 13. So it's many years. Many years with, uh, with interruptions too, right? Because I've been traveling the world. And that, you know, t t traveling in the world, I began when I was uh, 20. And I believe that's, uh, that's uh, part of the message, the core message of many of my paintings, you know, the impressions I had from, from the world. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. So it's not so clear cut, right? Yes. So, so Daniel, with your experience of like, almost a lifetime, if I may say, because you were born as an artist. How will you define arts? How I will define art? Now, that's, uh, that's a very good question. Almost everybody asks. No. <laughs> Defining art, uh, well, you have to define uh, uh, the real, the, the true artist's uh, approach to life. And real artist, a real artist is a person um, who, who has a lot of, um, of uh, the child inside, right? The, uh, the child's curiosity, that's very important, you know. Uh, the, and children, they're not afraid of um, making mistakes. They don't think in um, in achieving goals. They just they just they're just in the process, right? And that's the true artist, always looking out for something new, curiosity. Yes, when you mentioned something about like the the paint, the coloring, the drawing, I, I remember children when they paint outside the lines. Remember, the teacher will always say, oh, you are supposed to paint inside the line. So we should encourage children to, to paint and draw outside the line. Uh, if they keep on doing it, yes, then it's, <laughs> then it's definitely something that, uh, that uh, this uh, particularly uh, child wants, wants, you know. If you say it once, uh, well, this is not so correct. Maybe you should cut it off, right? Uh, and this child continues doing it, then let the child do it. Okay, I mean, it's it's a part of uh, of curiosity, of uh, exploring uh, boundaries. Do you, do you understand what I mean with boundaries? Exploring yes. these boundaries. So, so artists and, should explore. And, well, yeah, 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 exactly. And that's part of uh, an artist's uh, life, too. And that's something that I wanted to, to talk with you about today. Um, a part is... Mm, sorry. Um, a part is basically, you know, uh, to um, explore... Uh, the the inner soul to your inner soul. Um, again, I'm talking about real artists. I'm not uh, talking about the artists who paint because they want to uh, be famous, but the artist soul you're talking about, yeah? And um, a lot of the artists that I've met have been very, very uh, sensitive people because what they produce is something very deep inside of their soul. Yeah. Um, like um, uh, like s some of my paintings, they, they've got a message, right? And this message uh, holds all my belief in the world. I'll explain that la uh, later uh, when I give you this task, okay? Okay, uh, wow, I have a task. You, you mentioned, the, yes, you mentioned about the message. Yeah, I'm the teacher in art, so, yes. <laughs> so I'll give you a task, okay? Yes, yes. Daniel, you mentioned about message, I believe. So with your works, with your paintings, 
what do you normally or what message do you normally have with your paintings? What's what's your message there out there in the world with your paintings? Uh, my message? Yeah, yes. okay, right. Now listen, Ani, uh, I have, um, uh, we have spoken about that before, you know, and there's a lot of artists uh, who don't even know the message. And sometimes there's no message to uh, uh, a piece of art. Sometimes we're only talking about conveying or displaying uh, as you know, a state of mind, mood, etc. Right. So sometimes, some of my paintings has got a message. Sometimes it's just uh, something I find interesting because of the because of the shapes and stuff like that. And I've been through uh, three periods in my life, and. When I begin, I don't know if we should talk about that now, the, the very beginning. Yeah, yes, please. Your life as an artist. Yeah, right. Yes, please. So, uh, yeah, well, yeah, when I was a child, uh, no, uh, I, I've been 16 years like that, okay? I lived um, uh, um, in a house, in a little hut, deep, deep inside uh, the forest. Uh, so of course I painted a lot of uh, of landscapes, but painting la landscapes does not carry a specific meaning. Like uh, I think that's that, or I think this. You know, it's just it's just an emo uh, emotion, right? Like like my paintings back then. You know, my uh, my landscapes. Uh, it was always kind of, you know, um, in uh, in the night time, and a little there was a little light burning from between the, the trees. Mystery, right? I want to I want to convey and display um, a mystery. And to, this is the understand. first period of your journey as an artist. Say that. Is this the first, the first period of your journey as an artist when you were young? So you started with landscapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, and then and then, well, I've got three periods as I said before. Yes. And then, then I um, then I turned my attention to figurative abstract, and. Figurative abstract. Um, there's a lot of my paintings from that period that uh, that has a a message, you know, a message uh, that you can sometimes find in the title. So that's another thing. Um, figurative abstract is uh, not always so much about uh, showing uh, moods, etc., but you can state you you can state a message, you know, and of course you hope that the audience they uh, they grasp this uh, message. So, so that's the that's second a, period. That's the second period. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now, now uh, I return to uh, more. Uh, uh, naturalistic paintings too. Um, I don't know if you uh, know these uh, Greek goddesses, uh, the muses. Greek goddesses. So I, yes. So, so, so what I'm trying now is to give my interpretation of how they look like. So, uh, and again, that does not really ca carry. Um, uh, a spokable uh, meaning, but it show well, it shows the way uh, I think these uh, these uh, uh, goddesses look like. That's that's it basically, and some and, and some of them uh, carries uh, this uh, mood as well. So, Daniel, let me ask you: moving from one period to another. 
you mentioned about three periods in your life as an artist. Moving from one period to another, what lessons did you learn? That's a, yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, what now? What do you, uh, the question? What do you mean exactly? Uh, what, the lessons. What, what did you learn out from from moving from this, the first period where in you said you're in the the forest, and most of your work is about landscapes, and then the trees, and then there's a fire, and then you move to figurative, abstracts. So from from that to the first to the second, what 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 brought the change? Because I want no. Uh, that's a very good starting point. These naturalistic uh, landscapes and uh, the transitions to um, uh, to figurative abstract. You know, because I felt I felt that it was important for me to um, state a message more. And it is it is more easy if you uh, paint uh, paint figurative abstract and just uh, just a normal landscape, right? You might as well take a, a picture with a camera of a of a landscape, and you don't ask now what's your message message with that picture. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. So it means figurative, la abstract, care. They carry more message. Is that what you're telling me? Or yeah. carrying more meaning be, for, mm -hmm. compared to the landscape? I see. Yeah. And and then now you said you're into the Greek goddesses, and your your work is it's a work out of your imagination on how do they look like. So why did you move from the figurative abstract to these goddesses? No, that's uh, that's basically because I wanted I wanted to um, re rehearse painting. Uh, uh, no, I wanted to see how far I could get. Um, you know, the, uh, painting uh, fa faces, etc. I wanted to see um, how easy or no, not easy it was to. Paint um, expressions, expressions in the face, right? Yes, that's right. And, and that's a very uh, difficult task to do because uh, uh, now, if you want to, if you want to show a person that has some kind of anger inside of her, uh, her or, or him, right? Now, how are you going? I have to think. Now, how am I going to? Uh, Give that to the audience. Uh, well, a happy person. Well, that's much more easy because you have to paint a smile, uh, right? That's but, right. But uh, these, uh, yeah, but these uh, uh, more sort of subtle um, uh, feelings, they're much more difficult to uh, to paint. But I'm not finished. I haven't finished. I finished the nine uh, goddesses, but now I want to paint some, um, a little more my own style, you know, a little more from my own nature, my own uh, message or whatever you want to call it, you know. So, so uh, that's what I'm trying right now. Do you think you are going to have a fourth period as an artist? Do you think it's going to be, uh, there's going to be another phase as an maybe, artist. Maybe, uh, I don't know if I get sick and tired of, uh, of painting faces. But, but, uh, yeah, it is a kind of, uh, you know, uh, rehearsal. So... If I want to return to uh, convey uh, messages, etc., uh, I might change, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, um, I'm say I'm more or less saying that uh, I'm not uh, conveying messages, but that's not true. As we, as I said before, 
um, uh, there's a lot there's a lot in the, in the expression of these uh, uh, these women these female goddesses right yes and almost well, you can call that a meaning or whatever you know it's just uh, 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 what about yourself what you uh, when you see a painting uh, of a landscape and you don't uh, ask yourself now what's the meaning now what's the meaning of this uh, painting right you see it as something aesthetical yes that's that's not my my normal way of looking at paintings because for me art specifically paintings they are expressions human expressions of the artists yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's yeah. how i looked at it that's how i look at it so daniel where uh, sorry daniel you go ahead all right okay now that's why i said before you know that a lot of artists they're they're very sensitive people because because a lot of what they want to, uh, to display is uh, where it comes from the core of or deep from uh, inside. So, so I have spoken to a lot of artists, you know, and I've learned how to speak to artists sometimes. And if you want to criticize what they do, uh, be careful, you know. Always. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> just like, just like what you said. I think it's very sensitive to criticize works of art. Yeah, yeah. So, Daniel, exactly. where, where do you normally get your inspiration? Normally. Yes. So, uh, either when I travel or or from here, from inside your head. From the mind. That's what I uh, that's what I said to you before. That um, some of my figurative, abstract uh, feeling, uh, no, no paintings. They give you. They give you uh, uh, so some of my soul, right? Uh, of the meaning, the deep meaning I feel that there is in, uh, in the world, right? But. Let's wait until the task, okay? Then I explain what I believe in. Because you cannot just separate what a person uh, or an artist uh, believe in. You cannot separate this person from, from the paintings he or she does, right? It's always there. Yes, I agree. Some, some artists like to make... Uh, uh, Dark paintings, you know. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're a little sad inside, you know. And some, and some likes, uh, you know, to to make our paintings of people who who are, who are in a jolly good mood. So, so um, it varies. It, it do you think that it varies from the state of emotion of the artist? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the other day, you know, uh, due to my situation right now, <laughs> um, uh, one of my artist friends, she said, uh, said, well, this is the period where you have to paint really because uh, um, r right now I've got a lot of feeling inside, right? Mm -hmm. Um so that's what she says. So again, that shows a little bit about what artists they want to express. They want to express in my emotions too, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Let's in our emotion, in a period of time, or uh, in our emotions, uh, you're born with, you know. Totally. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that the people they are born with their own, uh, men, uh, you know, mentality, their own mood, right? Or it comes slowly with the upbringing. Yes, so, but but Daniel, do you paint on a regular basis, or do you paint based on your feelings, your emotions? Like today, I can paint even three. 
oh, but sometimes in a day you don't even paint at all so as an artist yourself uh, how does it work that's it again do do you paint on a daily basis or do you have a certain schedule when you paint or it's based yeah. on your your feelings your emotions now that's that's what I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about too because uh, now what may well today the competition is very hard you know and it's almost impo- it's almost impossible to survive as a painter just by what you uh, sell um uh if you want to survive as as a painter today you have to be world famous almost yeah okay so what so what's the difference between a professional artist and somebody who just do it you know uh, i believe that um if you're professional it has nothing to do with the amount of paintings you you uh, paint no sell and paint okay um it has to do with the the way you live your life and and talking about that i've got a lot of um, of uh, of working days you know specific working days a specific uh, number of um, of hours i have to paint you know because uh, what's the difference between a hobby and and a job a hobby is something you do when you feel like it a job is something you do too when you don't feel like it okay that's right yes um, yeah and once in a while you know i have to get up even though i i say to myself oh christ oh, not today please <laughs> so but i have to get up anyway because you've got an obligation to yourself um and that obligation i have and i know that a lot of other artists they have is to keep on prog- uh, progressing you know uh keep on developing yourself yes and your ability as an artist right and you don't do that just by regarding it uh, as a hobby and paint uh, uh, one time every 14th uh, 14th day now you got to have a tight schedule and i have that you know okay. daniel you mentioned about the financial part of of being an artist just like what you said it's the competition out there is not easy and at the same time if you really want to earn as an artist you have to be really famous will you encourage someone to be an artist for example a young a young guy a young girl will ask you i'm i, I want to be an artist will you encourage yes but i want to make uh, i want to explain to this person this young this young person that uh, it is a very hard world uh, but uh, and some say well i don't care well one of my ex uh, ex wife's uh, friends she was an artist too and i asked her one day now what do you say if you have to live the rest of your life you know just hanging in little cafes you know selling a painting for uh 2 and then she answered me uh i don't give a shit excuse my language but <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> i see because it was so deep inside of her being being uh, an artist and she was a little crazy too you have to be a little crazy if you want to be a painter or an artist you know i, I think we are all crazy in one way or another daniel <laughs> Each one of yeah. us we have our own tics, you know. <laughs> no, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. There's yes. A lot of people, you know, who live a, a life to get up um, at a specific time each and every morning, they go to work, they get, get back home, they eat at a certain time uh, uh, hour a day. Uh, but I do I don't do that. And again, they i think they're a little more um, 
uh, provocative with their, th their thoughts and beliefs. And they, they are always experimenting and testing things, you know. Like uh, um, the girlfriend I have now. I like her very much, but uh, and she has got this uh, particularly art, so she's very spontaneous, and and that's part of an artist's soul too, to be spontaneous and to uh, <clears throat> suddenly uh, suddenly say, "Well, now I want to do this, right? I just want to do it now." And I don't care about the cost. Maybe it's going to be a success. Maybe it's not. I don't care. And and that's the difference between children and us as an, uh, as grown ups. The older you get, this is what I felt. The older you get, the the more difficult it is to change style, because you get more and more afraid of you know making mistakes. A child is not uh, so afraid of uh, making these fails. So again, to maintain this uh, this artist soul, you have to hold your inner child very tight. See. Don't always go. Yeah. So Daniel, with with what we mentioned already, like the competition out there is not that easy, and then it's. It's not easy to survive as an artist, but what advice can you give to the young artists or those who are aspiring to be artists? What advice can you give them in order for them to survive financially? That they can still be an artist, but at the same time, they survive. Uh, you are talking about... Um... What I would say to them if yes. they want to. That's right. The young artists them. out there, that they're still starting their career as an artist. But at the same time, because, you know, very well the fact that it's not easy financially. No. no. Yeah. So well, what will you tell them? What advice can you give them? I'm sorry to say it, but uh, if they want to survive as a painter or or an artist, you know, they have to be able to push people away, you know, the competition away. And they always have to be uh, in, the, in the limelight. They always have to um, make uh, people aware of their existence, right? If you fall asleep and you don't, and you don't produce a lot, you know, then that's the, no one will notice you. No one will notice you. You said it correctly. Yes. I see. So uh, yeah. So I would give this advice. Um, be careful. But I wouldn't try to scare uh, children because it is for me. It is a fascinating way. Uh, way of life i don't think that i've uh, that i could uh, live uh, without this um, this rhythm in my life as an artist you know because i've i've been teaching you know i've been living the eight to four life before but it didn't feel, uh, it, didn't it didn't work feel, for you feel, what it didn't work for you the eight to four job no, no. Well, um, I've been teaching uh, in Thailand English, and I've been, you know, uh, I've been, I've been teaching uh, Danish um, around here in in uh, in Denmark, right? But um, I felt at a certain point, I felt that I was just standing up there repeating what I said uh, last year over and over again. <laughs> Okay, and, yeah, and you did, yeah. you don't like that. No, 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 and that's what the, and that's what the art has uh, given me. You know, it's uh, even though you might say that um, that some of my pictures they they look uh, very much the same. You know, I'm always trying to make uh, something a little different than last time, right? You know. 
experimenting. When I was younger, it was much more easy to uh, experiment uh, in a huge scale. But uh, today, you know, I'm a little bit older, so I'm a little bit more careful. And that's what we talked about before, you know, the child's soul and, and the young person's soul, you know. They're more willing to take risk. Do so you understand means, what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah, so, so you're telling that the, the older you get, the less risk you take? The, the what? The, the older you get, the less risk you take in life as an artist, at least in this perspective. Yes. I have an artist friend, okay, and he's selling very good. He's uh, selling his own uh, interpretation of landscapes, yes. Um, but if you ask me, this picture, they're just the same and the same again, because he found a frame uh, that, that people like. So now he's not, he's not really moving. He doesn't uh, change subject, you know. It's always the same. It's always the same comp uh, no competition uh, or composition he uses, right? Yes. So the same uh, paintings, oh, almost oh, the same subject, if I may say. So it's landscape no. and landscape after landscape. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, uh, because it's all right to. Uh, to paint the uh, uh, landscapes if you want to, but he has a certain uh, composition, you know, and it's always, you know, like there's two mountains in each uh, corner, right? And then it fades down here. It's always the same. And there's I a see. lake, but it's just with different colors. But then again, this man, he's about, what, 70 years old. So again, th that's what we talked about before, you know. Uh, exactly. He's not moving and he's a little uh, tense about taking uh, risks. So, again, talking about what I would say to uh, uh, students, uh, I, I would say, don't be afraid of taking a risk. Come on, just you might you might succeed, you might uh, fail, right? Uh, forget about goals. Another f uh, artist friend of mine, she's very good. She's really very good, and she uh, and she defined the artist uh, soul as as I do. You know, the one who's always curious, not afraid of making mistake, but in the process it's not so much about the goal i mean i want to i want to say this to people right so i begin here right? and then i want to end here no it's the process do, uh, do you understand and sometimes where that's that now that's a bliss that's really the best part of painting um when you're inside when you're painting I would say that it's kind of uh, meditative uh, uh, way of thinking you get into, you know, uh, because uh, <clears throat> you forget about past, you forget about the uh, future, you just live in the present, presence, and that's a that's a, a relief once in a while, you know, because sometimes we. If we're so uptight about, I want to get to this point, you know, I want to come this or that, you know, but when you're painting, you know, everything uh, disappears and you're just, you're just in the process, you know. That's why I like to put on, that's why I like to put on classical music, right? The one you heard uh, yeah, uh, earlier. Before. So 100% concentration, Daniel. What? When you're what? painting, you're 100% you have 100% concentration in what you're doing. And I think you've said a lot of things there that can also be applied in real life, not only for the artists. Like you mentioned about you take risk. And I think in life, we should take risks. And then you also mentioned about don't be afraid of making mistakes, which I believe that can also be applied in, in life in general. And another thing that you said you explore and you mentioned just now about 
being in the present, live in the present. That yeah. which as I think it's it's really really good. It's it's something that yeah. we should all follow in order to be happy in life. Because some people they're they too much in the past or they're too much about the future. They forget to live in the present. Yeah, exactly. Daniel, when, you said when, you have a time. Sorry. Daniel, you go ahead. Uh, again, just to pursue this uh, su subject, uh, what, uh, what do you want to say to, uh, to a young person? Um, I would uh, warn this person a little bit because being an artist is, uh, well, it does, it does not stop when you, um, when you've uh, finished painting for today. Uh, do, you, uh, do you understand? Yes. Because your mind keep on um, keep keep on thinking. You're always in a, in a in a state of alert or standby. You know, looking out for new things. You know, new new angles. You know, and and um, one of my artist friends she said. Uh, she said some very wise words. Now, don't you ever, ever think about marrying an artist. Don't even think, of, consider about having a relationship with an artist. Because when everybody else are looking around, looking for the latest party in town, an artist can stand there and stare for hours at a leaf. And, and, and <laughs> she's right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that lesson. So, listeners, don't marry or don't be in a relationship with an artist. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming from you, not from me, okay? So, Daniel, you said you have a task for me? Yeah, sometimes a little bit more like this, 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 you know. This is, this is a figurative abstract. Yeah. This is an example of a figurative abstract. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. So you see, I've had a white, a white period. Now I'm in a more reddish period. Anyway, I don't know if you can see this one. Oh, we have to hurry up. Can you see it? You have to hold it higher, Daniel. Yeah. Lower now. The camera should be lower. I, I, I yeah. can only like a part of it. The ha it's like clouds, black clouds. For yes, me, exactly. at least. Yes. And what about this? Now, if you use your imagination. The one on top, right? No, both. Both. The, the one with the reddish color. For me, it's like a woman in a post, like she's holding her butt, her, her, her back part, okay. and looking upward to the sky, something like that. Am I, am I getting it right? <laughs> and the oh, one with the white one, with the white color, again, as I said, it's like a dark sky. And then I can see two figures, a man and a woman. All right, don't worry, because it took me three weeks to figure out what I want to say. Now, this, now this painting really holds, uh, uh, it's very old. It's, for, uh, it's from a figurative abstract period, right? Uh, uh, but um, if you see these, they look, as you said, uh, like clouds, but very polluted and dark clouds, yes? That's right. Right, and these with well, a little imagination, you could see those as uh, as uh, stalks on a wheat field. And uh, the title of the painting is um, "Against All Odds, Still Growing." That's and, nice, and that, and that's uh, and that's the core meaning that I have uh, in my life. That nature will always prevail. 
ma mankind might be extinct within a few uh, decades. We never know, you know. And all this talk about Corona and Corona. I'm not going to preach now, but it's just an <laughs> idea. Okay. Oh, well, okay. It was just an idea I've got, you know, that um, <clears throat> it might be it might be mo Mother Nature uh, tapping us on our shoulder, whispering, be careful, because you don't respect me. I can be very mad, you know. I'm talking about Corona. Yeah, we'll never so, know. Yes. We can learn well, something from this situation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, who knows? Of course. Daniel, with all your experiences as an artist for many, many years, what is the greatest lesson you've learned in life? The greatest uh, message? The greatest lesson you've learned in life as an artist? Never to lose your curiosity. When you lose your cur curiosity, that's when... Uh, that's when you're lost. That's powerful. So you keep yourself curious. Never lose your curiosity. You all have to be curious all the time. That's very well, nice. Try, yeah. Well, I try to, yeah. So you, you know that I travel a lot, right? And that's basically to see uh, a lot of different uh, things, you know, because... Uh, each and every culture has got its own way to build uh, houses, etc. So that maintain uh, me alive up here. Yes, yes. And and Daniel, you shared a lot about the three phases in your life, what a true artist is, and. I want to know what decision you've made in your life that has an impact of who you are now. Well, that's a good question because uh, who knows? Who knows uh, who you are yourself uh, <clears throat> now? Again, I have to, re to return to that uh, by um, hold your experience, or uh, yeah, um, and drop and drop the f uh, the fear. Uh, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about, but drop drop the fear um, of uh, experimenting. Uh, experiencing uh, new things but is there a particular part in your life when you made that decision yes exactly and and that's part of uh, and that's part of my development too as an artist you know um, I've written in, on my Facebook page you know that the greatest the greatest moment in my life was when I uh, left Denmark and I saw the world. And how and how big it was, uh, how amazing it was, basically. <clears throat> so that's and my what to do. What? No, I have my last question for you, Daniel. Uh -huh. Because I know you're an artist, and art is not just about paintings; it's also about music, literature. So I'm going to ask. If you or somebody else is going to write your life as a book, what will be the title be and what kind of book will it be? Mm -hmm. that's, that's funny. The Brother of Marco Polo. That would be the title. The Brother of and Marco it, Polo. <laughs> okay. And yes, it would be about the. Uh, Traveling. You're you're traveling yeah. in different countries. Yeah, but not so much uh, describing uh, the differences between culture. I think maybe the uh, describing uh, the journey in itself, the journey I take in my inner head when I travel too, right? And 
because that's very important part of uh, of learning yourself uh, to uh, find to find yourself. That's a better way to say it. So through the through your through your journey in life or the traveling that you had in different countries, you were able yeah. to to know yourself more. You found who you are. Yes. And sometimes uh, you could even say that I change uh, personality when I travel. You know, uh, I become uh, much, much more extrovert. Well, uh, Denmark, you, you've never been here yet. I, I will be will. in the future. One day I will be there yeah, and yeah. meet you and see you <laughs> once again after many, many years. Yeah, I know. I know. You keep on saying that, but but people are very nice, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but they um, they they they're a little cold, right? They're not, they're, they're not very they're not as uh, welcoming. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult to get into the f f a new family or or get new friends, etc. Right. Um, maybe it has to do with the winter, the cold winter, because uh, uh, in uh, in hot countries, people they're outside all the time, you know, and they and they talk on the street and stuff like that, you know. Uh, they, uh, for what three, four months we in Denmark, you know, we are locked locked inside our houses. So maybe that has has an impact on on the mentality of this country. So that's why I say that I uh, that I change uh, mind. I become much more extrovert when I travel. So you socialize more when you're outside of Denmark. Much more, and it's much easier to uh, to socialize. Yes. Yeah. Well, I can tell you a, a lot, uh, many stories. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of refugees in this country, so I could tell you a lot about what they, their opinion uh, is, you know. So, but that's a that that's a different topic. Yes, maybe we will have another chance to talk about your experiences in other countries and other culture yeah. next time yeah daniel thank you so much all right okay thank thank you so much for your time thank you so much for sharing your experiences and of course your thoughts as an artist and i hope we meet again soon yeah we will <laughs> yes yes definitely we will Yes. I'm going to, to see you again. It's either I'll see you there in Denmark or you come back here in Thailand and then we what will I'm talk. Thinking about, what I'm thinking about going uh, to Thailand because uh, Sri Lanka has lost it, its uh, magic for me. Then come back to Thailand and see me. <laughs> yeah, or Bali. Well, I don't know exactly. Yes. Yeah, you have been to Bali, but it's a very nice place too. Yeah, probably we can go there too. Okay, let's do that. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Daniel, once again. And to my light mates, if you like this particular episode, please share it with your families and friends and learn. Because my special guest mentioned a lot about things that we can apply in our life, like don't don't hesitate to take risks. Be in the present moment. Live in the present. And so much more. And I'm sure this episode is another lesson for everyone. Thank you so much. Until my next episode. <laughs>